Welcome back to Fox and Friends. This morning, the White House beginning its search for a new communications director as we learn Kate Bedingfield, who currently holds a role, is leaving her post. The longtime Biden aide is responsible for helping shape his message, but she's joining the slew of communications officials leaving the administration before the midterm elections as the president's approval ratings plunge. Here to react, Fox News contributor, Lara Trump. Lara, so good to see you this morning. Uh, she's not the only one. There's a lot of people who have left. <laughs> Why do you think she's leaving? Yes, you can add this, Rachel, to the tally of folks who have jumped ship from the Biden-Harris administration in the first 18 months um, of this administration. And look, uh, she does have a bit of a tough job. We all have to admit that. She is the comms director for the White House. And it's Joe Biden and Kamala Harris she's got to work for. I mean, it's not like those two have been a dream to have to deal with. I'm sure there's been a lot of cleanup, a lot of excess work that she's had to do. So we can acknowledge that. But, of course, Ron Klain um, gave her a very glowing review in the announcement that she was going to leave the White House. He credits her with getting Joe Biden elected. He credits her with all the great achievements, he says, of this administration. And at a time when you have 88 percent of the country thinking that we are on the wrong track as America, um, that doesn't really bode well for your position. Obviously, inflation, gas prices, an open southern border, an economy that's getting worse by the day, you take any one of those things by themselves, and in the private sector, you wouldn't be resigning. You would be fired from your job for failing so epically if she indeed had a hand in any of those tasks. But we all know what's going on here, Rachel. As we head towards November, as we head towards these really important um, midterm elections, there are so many people that see the writing on the wall. Yeah. And a lot of folks in this White House are saying, we don't want the stain of this White House associated with us, and we don't want to, quite frankly, be on the losing team. I just want to know who's going to write Joe Biden's cue cards if she cards if she's out of there, I guess. <laughs> yeah, it's a little bit of kill the messenger. I mean, she's probably not responsible for the policy. She's just responsible for trying to make them look pretty, um, even though, as you mentioned, 88 percent of Americans don't approve of where this White House is going. The party has also lost over, uh, you know, a million people have registered for the Republican Party. Um, now they've switched parties. And a lot of people um, think that number is going to be even higher in the midterms. A lot of people don't go through the process of changing parties, but then come uh, the midterms, they will vote Republican. So what do you think? Is this going to be just an absolute tsunami for the GOP? I mean, I, I think so, but, um, you know, we can never take our foot off the gas. You have to play this game like you're behind every single step of the way. And while we do have a lot of confidence on the Republican side, uh, we should never be overly confident. But, Rachel, I think you're right. You know, we saw this phenomenon happen in <clears throat> 2016 when people went in to vote. They voted for Donald Trump. They came out. They didn't even want to tell the exit pollsters right. they had voted for Donald Trump. But obviously... He won in, in a huge way. You don't have to be registered as a Republican to vote for the Republicans, but I think that's what's going to happen as we head towards November. All right. Lara Trump giving her predictions. Thanks a lot. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilme. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.